Over the past five years, I've used calorie tracking to lose about 35 pounds. The problem is, I've used the same tool that everyone else has, my fitness pal. But there's a whole slew of other calorie tracking apps you can use, and I wanted to see which one is best. So I went on a digital pilgrimage across all the calorie tracking apps, and here's what I found. I want to start with Scan Food because this app really stood out to me, but not in a good way. For starters, the instant I downloaded the app, they asked me if I wanted to shell out for premium without giving me any idea what I would be paying for. Also, the app is called Scan Foods, but literally none of the foods I scanned were in the database. Also, when I looked up dried oats, there was a 5 calorie option and a 460 calorie option. I think I'll pick the 5 calorie option because that makes me feel better about the amount of calories I've eaten today. And you have to manually enter all of your workouts. This is about as bad as it gets. And maybe this app just needs more time to clean out its database and get more users. But as of 2023, this is hot garbage. Hot garbage. So I award Scan Foods the worst app by far. Next up is Lose It, Lifesome, Yazio, and My Fitness Pal. All these apps are essentially the same. You could call them the standard calorie tracking apps. Every one of these apps was able to fairly accurately estimate my daily calorie expenditure. Every single one of them syncs with Garmin, Apple Health, and Fitbit. They all have visibility into your macronutrients, and you're able to create recipes, which is a feature I find incredibly important. The only major difference is that Yazio pushes their premium feature very aggressively. And MyFitnessPal probably has the most awkward UI of all of these. If you're just looking to track your calories to lose, gain, or maintain weight, then all of these are reasonable options, especially especially at the free level. I will give a slight edge to LifeSum over the others because the UI was very intuitive and smooth and the food database was really clean. Plus, every food I scanned was in the database. And if you're looking to shell out for premium, LifeSum appeared to have the nicest premium features. For example, they have this life score that doesn't just look at if you're hitting your calorie target. It's also looking at, are you eating healthy foods? Are you exercising regularly? And if you're looking to build a healthy lifestyle, this is gonna give you the best guidance for that. Especially since what you eat and how you exercise are equally, if not more important to your overall health than just your weight. I found myself really getting into this score and wanting to sleep and eat better just so that I could improve it. And that's a great feedback loop. We're so used to apps gamifying things to addict us and kind of ruin our lives, whereas LifeSum has come up with this gamification that made me want to sleep better and exercise more. Tip of the hat, LifeSum. Well done. Weight Watchers is almost the same as these other apps, except for a few minor differences. First, they have a social media feed with a community posting pictures of what they're eating and healthy recipes. I found that there were plenty of healthy recipes in the other apps, and I find that there are plenty of subreddits if you're looking for a weight loss community. Weight Watchers also uses a proprietary scoring system instead of calories. So higher calorie foods or higher calorie density foods will have higher scores, and you have a set amount of points that you can eat per day or per week. Their point system can actually be quite nice. For example, if you're eating very low calorie density foods, it doesn't count for any points. So if I just had low fat Greek yogurt, egg whites, asparagus, and apples all day, I could eat an infinite amount of these. But the thing is, these kinds of foods you aren't prone to overeating on, so you can have as much of them as you want. So there is a small benefit to the point system in that it leads you to lower calorie density foods. And that can get you towards healthier eating habits that especially makes calorie restriction easier. And if you don't want to think about calorie density and how many calories you're tracking and do a bunch of math, the simplicity of Weight Watchers could be useful for you. The user interface for Weight Watchers is no better or no worse than the other apps. I found that I was able to log food fairly easily, and Weight Watchers food database seems to be pretty good quality. Most of the foods I scanned were in the database, and when I looked things up, there were reasonable calorie amounts. I'd put their food database at roughly the same quality as LifeSum. But the biggest difference with Weight Watchers is that there's no free version, and it's way more expensive than all of these other apps. So why is Weight Watchers so much more expensive than all the other apps? I think it just comes down to name brand recognition. They've been around for far longer than MyFitnessPal, LifeSum, or Yazio. So you're paying a premium just because of their historical marketing. So I would say it's absolutely not worth paying for. Noom is the Peloton of fitness apps. It may be expensive, but people love it. And I am one of those people. Actually, I guess Peloton is the Peloton of fitness apps. 
Noom includes 15-minute daily lessons that don't just teach you how to eat well, but also how to have a healthy relationship with food. They talk about intuitive eating, emotional eating, different diet styles, and they tend to give you challenges each day, like leave a little bit of food on your plate so that you're not stuck in the mentality that you always have to finish all the food on your plate every meal. The food tracking and food database is also very high quality. They don't show macros for foods, but they do break foods down by calorie density, and they do some something interesting, which is give you a budget for different calorie densities, and this is going to push you towards more healthy foods each day. So they have three levels, orange, yellow, and green, where green is the lowest calorie density and orange is the highest calorie density. I always found it to be a fun game to see how much green food I could fit into a day, and I ended up eating insanely healthy. And this helps you aim for foods that will make you feel fuller, especially when you're in a caloric deficit. Noom's calorie tracking also does this very subtle but cool thing where they give you a calorie range for your goal in the day and not just a specific amount. So you never feel like, oh, I went slightly over the calorie amount today, so I failed. It's more, oh, I was in the calorie range that I was shooting for today. And since calorie tracking is pretty complex, very messy, and there's a large margin of error, you're not just going to estimate everything perfectly every day, especially if you're going out to eat. This makes setting a goal range instead of a specific amount really useful as a mentality. Noom also also gives you direct access to nutrition coaches, and I found this incredibly useful. For example, at one point my weight was plateauing for over a month. So I talked with my nutrition coaches, and we realized that my calorie target was about 500 calories higher than it should be, which was preventing me from losing any weight. One weakness of Noom is their community. I tried to engage in the community, but I found that most of the discussions weren't very useful to me, and most people were pretty disengaged. Also, I bought the flexible workout guide from Noom, and this was a complete waste of money. They don't have an app or anything, they just sent me a PDF of which exercises I should do with pictures of how to do them and minimal descriptions of how to perform the exercises with proper form. I didn't find this motivating at all and there are so many great apps for training that you should definitely use one of those instead of Noom. Macrofactors is the most unique of all of the calorie tracking apps that I tried. It doesn't estimate your daily calorie burn by syncing to your wearable devices and figuring out your calorie expenditure based on your exercise. Instead, it looks at all the food you've eaten in the past week and all of your weigh-in measurements over the past weeks and adjusts how much you should be eating per day based on those two values. So for example, let's say your goal is to lose one pound per week. Macro factors would want to put you at a 500 calorie daily deficit. So let's say they estimate this to be 2,500 calories that you should eat per day. You end up eating 2,500 calories per day, but after a week, your weight is exactly the same. Then the app would adjust down your daily calorie goal to be 2,000 instead of 2,500 so that you're at a 500 calorie deficit. Honestly, I think their algorithm is a bit more nuanced than that, but I found it to be incredibly accurate. I also found their initial estimate of my daily calorie expenditure to be the most accurate of all the apps, interestingly. One other big difference of this app is that it doesn't just track your weight over time. Instead, it tracks your weight trend. And this is incredibly valuable as your weight can fluctuate really significantly day to day. There have been times when, despite being in a caloric deficit, I weighed considerably more the next day. Your weight can be significantly impacted by how much salt you've taken in and your hydration levels. But when we think of weight change, we're mostly considering losing fat and hopefully not so much muscle or putting on muscle and hopefully not so much fat. Or I guess in some people putting on a little fat as well. But anyways, while water weight may move the scale quite a bit, it's not really an indication of the weight that you're trying to track. Macro Factors looks at a rolling average over time, so that even if your scale weight is four pounds higher today, your weight trend may barely have budged. And this is so valuable. I talk to lots of people who think that their weight isn't going down because they pay too much attention to the days where their weight spikes up. And this can cause people to give up even though they're making progress. As is in the name, Macro Factors also gives you macronutrient recommendations. I found it completely impossible to hit my macro targets if I was just logging through the day as I ate, but it was a fun game when I strategized what I was going to eat the next day so that I could get as close as possible to all of my macro targets. If you're willing to put in a bit of work, Macro Factors is absolutely worth the effort. 
So which app is best for you is likely a function of your goals. If you've tried weight loss multiple times before but not had success, I'd recommend Noom. It gives you the fundamentals of how to build a healthy relationship with food and how to approach weight loss sustainably. If you just want to track your calories easily for free, LifeSum is your best bet. It has a very smooth UI and the food database is immaculate. Also, if you want to upgrade to premium with them, their life score is a lot of fun. And they have good additional features. And finally, if you're a fitness nerd who's willing to put in that dorky work to get a six pack, Macro Factors has got your back. I found it to be the most accurate at estimating my daily calorie expenditure. I really liked that it adjusted week by week based on how much my weight was actually changing. And I love that it shows your weight as a trend over time instead of just what it is each day. 